Anybody? Can you see my hands moving? Can you hear me speaking? Oh, hi. Oh, it's very quiet. I wonder what we can do about that. Maybe I'll just speak up. Um, all right, let me know if you still can't hear me very well. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to get started. So I'm Emily. I work in the preservation department. Uh, and I'm going to show you a quick demo, well, quick hour, hour and a half, something like that, um, of some of the repairs that we do here. Um, so the conservation lab is here to maintain the collection um, that we have here at the libraries. And um, we do a variety of different repairs. And today I'm going to, um, let's see, adjust the volume next to the mute button. Oh. I just muted, now I'm back. Okay, I think it's okay, I'm gonna keep going. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a spine repair and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do four of them. Um, we'll see if I have time for that. Um, I think that um, it's interesting to see it in a batch setting. That's usually how we do work down here. Um, we don't just work on one book at a time, we work on a stack of books. Um, at a time. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to get started and I will talk as I work. Um, so a spine repair is sort of what it sounds like. I'm going to repair the spine, which has torn um, with use. And um, what qualifies this for a spine repair is that the end, sheet, end sheets still need to be intact um, and the text block is still connected to the boards um, in that way. But it's really just a matter of the spine piece has um, has torn or come loose or is coming loose and, and showing its, its insides to the world, which is not what we want. Um, so what we're going to do is um, replace the spine piece and then glue on the original um, title back onto it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start, like I said, and I will sort of talk more about it as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off, officially cut off, the original spine piece. So I'm going to take my scalpel and slice that. I'm slicing on the board so that it's not going to um, damage anything on the inside. And then I can take off that original piece. Sometimes there's ripping involved <laughs> uh, in book repair, and uh, sometimes things have to get worse before they get better. I like ripping things apart. Let me get my little scissors here. If the front pages have separated from the cover, would what would be done differently? Good question. Um, so if if there was a issue with the text box attachment to the boards, um, it would need more of a full rebind, so it would it would mean taking off the original boards, taking off the original end sheets, um, and then we would clean the spine, and we would reattach new end sheets, and we would make new a new cover for it completely, um, and reattach it um, whole um, instead of doing it piece by piece. But in this case, because it was the only the spine that was needed to be fixed, um, we sort of um, don't want to do more than we need to do. Uh, to a book in order to make it function uh, like a book. So in this case, once we get the spine piece on, it's gonna it's gonna function just like a book, and that's all we need. So it's really nice because um, this way we actually get to keep the original cover and we get to keep the original um, material. And um, so it's nice from a um, like if this if this had a cool design on it, that's nice to be able to keep. But it's also nice just to um, you know reuse, repurpose, um, and not always make brand new. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I'm going to keep going. So like I said, I like to do batch work, which means that I want to pick up one set of tools and do everything I need to do with that set of tools before I do the next thing. So 
now I've got those all sliced. I already did, um, I already sliced off this one because I wanted to get the spine piece ready uh, for a demo and it needed a little bit of time to dry. So I went ahead and did that before we started. Um, yeah, more ripping. And I'm just gonna cut off this extra little bit of book cloth that is part of the original cover. Ripping, tearing. <laughs> These are the sounds of the conservation lab. Let's see. See, that was still attached to the end sheet there, and I didn't want to upset that. This particular repair also ends up getting lots of bits of pieces of book on my bench, so there's going to be a lot of um, bits. And I'm wearing an apron, and usually what ends up happening is that all these bits uh, end up in my lap, <laughs> and then I shake out my apron into the trash can all at once. Um, how many books do you like to do in a batch? That's a good question. So I'm doing four today because I think that would that's going to fit best in the time we have. Um, I usually do somewhere between six and eight at a time. Um, I find that to be a good um, a good number. The other good thing about batching, and this will make more sense when we get there, um, is that parts of this process require time to dry. And so while one is drying, I can be do doing the next step on the next one. Um, so that's handy. All right, so I've got my these original spine pieces. And what I want to do now is um, clean them off. I don't need these little side bits. so. I'm just going to go ahead and get that ripped off. I'm going to I'm going to do a clean cut on these later so it doesn't really matter if I'm ripping them and it's got a rough edge. Um, that one doesn't really want to rip. Okay. And then they all have these original uh, spine stiffeners, um, this paper bit. So I'm going to try to remove that. I'm going to do as much as I can dry and then I'm going to get some water involved. So while I'm doing this, I will tell you a little bit more about the preservation department and what we do. Um, we have, uh, we've done a video in the past that gave a tour of our, um, our space here. Right now you're just going to see this blue mat that I'm working on and in a little bit you'll see the, the book press that I'm going to put these in. Uh, but there's another video on our um, channel that shows the full, um, the full lab the full studio that uh, and Jamie gave a tour of that and he, he talked more about this uh, about what we do but a little brief um, synopsis is um, that I like that tour stream oh good yeah it was it's fun it's fun to show off our space um, um, so what we do is we have I, don't, I can never remember how many volumes we have in our collection if anybody's here who knows that and would like to add that to the chat I don't know millions several many millions of books um, in in the stacks and a lot of them are uh, damaged and um, oh yeah thanks for that um, <laughs> thanks for that link to that video there's Jamie yeah you are a star now Jamie good job um, and now you're gonna be even more of a star because I'm sending more people to watch you um, so anyway there's millions of uh, volumes in the stacks many of them could use um, could use repair, but we don't. We are a three-person department, and we don't have the um, the resources to do all of that. Um, so I say all that to say that we are a use-based um, repair uh, department, meaning that we only work on books that have recently been used by a researcher or by a student, because that has demonstrated its value to the collection currently. Um, and so that's how we select um, the books that we work on. I'm just bringing my water, my cup of water over here because um, I'm going to start um, adding some moisture to this. So I've gotten everything off that I can dry off of these spines. So 
and I'm just going to um, add a little bit of water to sort of reactivate the glue that's on there so that I can scrape off um, the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and get the second one soaking while I work on the first one. And what I'm going to need now is a scrap piece of paper that I can scrape this onto. If we had four or five people, yeah, we could definitely take on all four million volumes. Good point, because we're pretty awesome. Now, uh, we are certainly limited in what we can repair with the number of people we have. And also, um, we uh, other options that we have, we don't only repair in-house the books that need um, to be fixed. We also send a lot of them out to the commercial bindery in Greensboro, um, and they do sort of a quicker a quick and dirty job to get things that are in good condition, the papers in good condition, it's not gonna be damaged by a quick and dirty operation. Um, we will send those out. Um, and the things that we keep in house are things like this that don't need the full rebind, but they ju it just needs a, a, a quick sort of fix. Um, or like I said, the paper is bad, it needs a little bit more um, attention. Um, uh, by someone who's going to take their a little bit more time and uh, tender love and care uh, to the book. So that's the kind of thing that we'll keep in house. We also try to prioritize um, uh, core material, so STEM, sciency, technology, uh, stuff like that. Um, all right. So now we've gotten down to the dry bits again. I'm going to re reanimate that again and move on to the next one. <laughs> hey, Robin. Uh, we did start at 12. Um, you haven't missed too much. I've just taken some spines off of the books, uh, and I'm now cleaning them. Robin is our other technician in the lab, so she she knows what's happening. She doesn't need to see the whole process. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I was just talking about us being use-based. Um, a conservation lab so we're not we're not repairing everything that's in the stacks only um, the things that have proven their usefulness recently all right so that's I'm going to call that pretty clean especially because you can see once once the stuff gets wet um, it gets a little bit more fragile so um, you got to start being a little bit more gentle to it luckily that little tear I'm going to glue down in a bit so um, it'll be fine. You'll still be able to read it. Um, and so now I'm going to dry this. You can see I've got the first one that I did uh, before the stream started um, already drying. So these are what we call uh, Rime sandwiches, blotter sandwiches, some sort of sandwich. <laughs> it's got uh, a blotter paper and then it's covered with Rime. So the blotter paper will absorb the moisture and the Rime uh, keeps it from sticking. Um, if there's any residual um, adhesive on there. And then I'm going to put that under a weight, um, but that's going to be off screen. But that's what's happening <laughs> over here on my other other side of my bench. Okay, quickly back to this one before it dries on me, although it sort of already did. <laughs> Forbidden sand. <laughs> I scarfed down a sandwich before the stream started, so I am not even, the sound of a Rime sandwich does not make me hungry, I have to say. Lots of fiber, it's true. All right, let me get this one activated over here. It's interesting. Um, but some books and some um, spines are, are more uh, finicky than others. It depends on what kind of and how much glue they used and uh, what materials they used. Um, but it's interesting how some, some of them will just come right off. You don't even need to add water. Um, and some of them you really, you got to stick with. And eventually you just say, you know what? That's going to stay on there. That's fine. Methyl cellulose. Wheat starch. Yep, we do use a lot of edible stuff. I have to say I've never 
taste of them. So um, I couldn't tell you how tasty they are. I think we're back. Um, sorry about that. We're in the basement here, and I think the internet did not want to cooperate with us. Um, hello again. It's so good to be back with you. You can see I did not make much progress because <laughs> I was fussing with the internet, but I think we are here. All right, so did you guys come up with any puns while I was gone? I think I might have missed some of the chat. All right, I'm going to call this good on this spine and then load it up in my stack. Hopefully the internet will like us again. All right, now it's time to clean up and start the next section. I'm hoping that you're in there. Okay, good. I see chats happening. I think that means we're all good. Okay. we got to start fresh with a clean, clean area now that we've taken care of those spines, and we're going to move right along. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is keep tearing this down. That's how I think of it in my mind is tear it down. Um, and I'm going to start using a ruler for that. So I'm going to find, I'm going to make some marks. Wait, how much do I do? I'm going to make some marks of where I want to cut this. On the front and the back. And like I said, I've got these tools in my hand, so I'm just going to keep going with my, with my batching. got quite a long ruler here. I could probably be using a shorter one, but you know, use what you got. Did everybody go away when I stopped and started again? Oh, live again. Yay! We're doing it. The internet's doing it. Thanks for coming back or sticking with me. Okay, so now I've got all of my bits marked about where I'm going to um, make my cuts. I'm going to grab my scalpel again and um, gently and away from my fingers, like I don't want my thumb underneath that, I'm just going to slice into this cloth. <laughs> Reanimation of the stream. I'm spooky. Are we already doing Halloween? Golly. I'm okay with that. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to gain access to underneath this cloth. And so I'm just giving it a little slice so I can get in there. September 1st. Okay. Great. I'm late then. So I'm just slicing into the um, cloth here. I have a visitor coming in, so I'll have. <laughs> Jamie has returned from wherever he was. He was in the chat, and now he's here. There's his hand. Hi, See? <laughs> we. I, well, I wasn't committed before, but golly, I'm going to be now. I didn't know. Let's 
We got some repetitive action happening here, but I promise in a second you'll see something new. Where is the preservation department? Uh, we're on the ground floor. I forget where we, it's better to call it the ground floor than the basement. <laughs> um, and it's we're in the east wing, in the on the ground floor, on the Hillsboro side. There's actually some windows that you. I should, probably shouldn't tell you this because y'all are going to do something spooky to me. But there are windows outside uh, that sort of lock in. Um, if you want to come visit and wave. <laughs> okay, we did it on all four. So now I'm going to go and lift that cloth. If you can see what's happening. I sort of, I trim that cloth. It's not going to focus very well. Um, and now I'm pulling it up. And so now I have access to um, get the rest of this up. So I'm going to peel, I'm just peeling this original cloth away from the original board back to where I, um, where I trimmed up. So now we have, we're in, now we're in. This is a repair that actually, um, when you see the finished product, it doesn't look like very much happened. Um, but then you see it in the whole process and you go, oh, yeah, no, you cut fully into that book. You got in there. Um, so I'm going to end up with these little wings right here. So I'm just going to trim that off so we're all even. Sometimes these little bits come up with a piece of um, board that has cut off with what I trim, so I just sort of scrape that off, get it out of the way. Jenny's back again. Now, live from his office. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm batching, I forget what thing I've already done. And sometimes I forget to do a small step and I move on to the next thing. And when I get back to that book, I go, oh, darn it, I forgot to lift that cloth or I forgot to do whatever it is. That's the downside of batching. But it's really, it's satisfying. Here's what I like about batch work. Um, it feels really good to go through the stack as quickly as I am to do these little steps. It just feels like, ha, 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 done four times in a row. Even though I'm not done, but uh, it feels like I'm making a lot of progress because I've been doing it four times, or six or eight, whatever. It is really satisfying, isn't it? Just wait, it's going to get even better. Order. I trimmed those before I lifted the boards. Listen, you gotta keep it interesting. <laughs> all right. So now we're all the way in to four books. So what do we do now? Now we gotta um, we gotta prep this to. Um, to add a new piece of cloth to the spine. What would you do with a soft cover book with a bad spine? Um, 
yeah, a soft cover book, if it's ripped, it's pretty much the end of the line for that cover. And we would um, do a full rebind on it and turn it into a hardcover book. Um, occasionally, if it's not like super ripped, we can do um, a paste mend repair with some Japanese tissue just to um, sort of cover up the, the or reinforce the tear. Um, but usually that's not going to work long term. So we would do a more um, substantial repair to that book and do a full rebind. Okay, so what are we going to do now? I got to prep this for new material. So what I'm going to do is eventually what's going to happen here is that I'm going to take a new piece of buckram that with a sympathetic color and I'm going to attach, I'm going to trim it to the right size and attach it here. And in order to make this um, nice and not bumpy, I'm going to take off a layer of this board um, so that I have a ridge where I can lay the new cloth in. And that way, um, there won't be a bump when I glue all of this back down. So what does that mean? It means more measuring. I'm just going to run through all four of these again and do get these measurements on. So I'm just marking two places so that I can line, I can line up my ruler um, in the next step and get a straight line. At least hopefully straight. Hopefully I'm not doing it too fast and I end up with a, a diagonal line. Although, again, like I said, you got to keep it interesting. You're not have a diagonal. So now, what I need is a weight of some kind. So this is just a bag weight. I like to put it there so it gives me some resistance for the, for the task I'm about to do. So now I've got my marks uh, that I just uh, measured out. I'm going to line up my ruler there. And I'm going to try to slice through one or two layers of this board keep my finger out of the way. I don't know if you can see that, but now there's a line where I've just sliced that board. This always feels dangerous because I, I push that out of the way and just enough time to get the scalpel in. Um, Alright, so now I'm going to take off a layer or two of this board. Basically, I'm just going to try to delaminate it up to that line that I just trimmed. Um, so, um, some some books and some board is really nice, and it lets you just come off in a strip like that, and that's usually what I want. But other ones, you sort of have to dig and claw and um, carve out um, this line, and it's sometimes it can be really frustrating. But man, if you can get the perfect peel with the right depth all the way across this book, oh, it feels so good. These are the kind of days you live for in conservation. Also, sometimes when this um, part of the spine is higher than this board, I find it hard to work with. So I'll just stick a piece of board underneath and then that lifts this up over this and then I've got access to this a little bit better. Oh yeah, some old chipboard is just like killer. But what we're going for here is a nice flat surface that I can glue um, the new uh, buckram book cloth to. Um, and I don't want it to be bumpy because uh, you can see that in the end result. Like I said, some, some board you can't really help it and you're going to get bumps. But um, see, now I'm starting to get fussy and I'm making bumps. Okay, so. You probably are not going to be able to see this on this camera. 
Ooh, focus. Do you see that little ledge there? It's just enough thickness for this book cloth to fit right in there when the time comes. Give me a good one. Oh yeah, that felt good. All right, see, sometimes it just works with you and you get very happy. Here's another thing that happens uh, when you work with your hands a lot. I feel like I could see things better with my fingers sometimes than my eyes. So like rubbing my finger along here, I can tell if it's even or not in a way that I can't see with my eyeballs. Let's see, I haven't cut this yet. Okay, better wait that on. Back to the dangerous bit. All right, I sort of broke my, I broke my batch processing there. I meant to uh, slice all these first. Same way driving at night. Oh dear, I think I must have forgotten what you are referring to because I don't know what you mean. Oh, eyeballs, seeing, seeing things. Ah. Hmm, that scares me. I feel like maybe I don't want to be on the road when y'all are driving at night. Slice. Let's keep peeling. See all the bits that are coming off of this book? These books? It's just like a chaos time. Oh, that board felt good. I want a little bit more that was a little bit thin. Famous last words. Sometimes you can get a little too carried away. Uh oh. Are you guys still there? I think it crashed. Uh oh, I still see the chat going. Can y'all still hear me? Okay, good. Oh, the video's frozen. You can hear me, but the video's frozen. Not frozen anymore. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Thank you for the feedback. Very lonely over here. <laughs> There's a first aid kit and a safety straight edge. You're right. too deep, I can tell. And then I tried to cut it off, and now I gotta start this strip again. Why do I put it under? Yeah, um, I put this under because sometimes I was saying that if this, if the spine part is taller than the board, I have trouble accessing the board. 
maybe I'll just use the, the board of the remake sandwich to lift that up a little bit. This is a different, this, this sandwich has nothing to do with our pressing of the sandwich, of the sandwich of our spine pieces. See, these are still hanging out and drying over here under weight. And I just have an extra one that I'm using for this different purpose now. my friend. Ugh. From the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat. This one is not nearly as satisfying. Kind of work you can really just get lost in and sort of just get into a trance. Sort of nice, except when you're trying to talk to a stream, <laughs> a live stream. Oh, I will not be defeated. I will take this board down. Yeah, buddy. Got her done. All right, one more. Sort of nice you can sort of, if I was just doing one, um, it'd be hard to, to be able to describe this and then like actually demonstrate the differences. Look at this. I mean, it is just happiness. It's really thin, but it's coming off in one, one go. Makes me the happiest. Come on, buddy. All right, I spoke too soon. <laughs> that first one came in one go. All right, pretty good. start well then I have to cut my my new pieces that are going to go on next and then I will start reattaching spines which is what we're all here for okay that felt good woohoo Ford manufacturers in the 50s didn't care about anybody, I'm convinced. All right. Let's get this out of the way so that I can just go in my lap. <laughs> All right, cool. So now I'm going to start cutting my new um, cloth. So I've got this big piece. I'm, like I said, I'm going to try to do something sympathetic to the original like this red might not match um, exactly, but it's pretty, it's pretty close. Um, Jamie, it makes me very, very nervous that you can hear me through the wall. Um, all right, I'm just going to trim um, a chunk of this. I will, I will make it um, exactly right um, in a bit. I'm 
just going to give myself something to work with. And I'm just going to square this off using the, the mat, the, um, the grid on the mat. mat. So now I've got this corner is square. I'm just going to line that square end up with the bottom of this board and then use my ruler as a jig to make it um, this much taller. This is about an inch and a quarter. I wonder if it's a grain issue. Yeah, that's. I think that is true. Like not all binders were as careful with use boards with grain parallel to the spine. Right. So that's a good point, Robin. A lot of um, as a general rule in book binding, you want anything that has a grain to it so that it, if it folds um, more easily, you want it, that to go parallel to the spine. And yeah, so that last one that I did, that you could tell that the grain was going very much um, parallel to the spine because it just peeled right off. And I think whichever one I was having trouble with, it definitely felt like there wasn't a strong grain to that board or it was going um, uh, perpendicular. Um, this is library buckram. Um, it's the strongest kind of um, book cloth. I'm having trouble thinking about what it is that they do to it, but it's cloth that they like infuse with something. So it's it's really tough. Um, yeah, buckram. So I think that's the, the fun word you're talking about. Um, yeah, so it will last a long time and um, and I've got the grain going parallel to this line. All right, so I've got that cut about an inch and a quarter um, above there. Yeah, I think it was buckram that was the fun word. Um, let's see. In this case, I don't have a, a color that's close to this, but I do know that the words on the spine were um, brown. So in this case, I'm gonna use a contrasting color because ultimately you're only going to see this color about right here on either side of the spine. So it's not going to be um, a lot, but also you can sort of have fun thinking up wacky combinations, but that's not what we do here. We really try to make it um, work with the original. So again, I'm going to square this off, although that's pretty good already. I've got some black bucket here. This one doesn't have a straight line yet though, so. You can see you don't really need that much to cover the um, the amount that we're trying to cover here. Okay. The internet is being very rude. Oh, hello. Audio and video are working. Huzzah! You're doing great. Okay, good. All right. So, um, we just roll with the punches. That's what we're doing. Um, okay, so back to what we were doing. I've been cutting the buckram. And now we need a new spine stiffener. So that part that we took off of the old spine, we're going to replace. And I'm going to use um, some paper. This is paper that we use um, for our, our end sheets when we do rebind a complete book. And then these are just like off cuts of that. So um, this needs to be the same height as the board. So I usually just sort of crimp that. It. And then I need it to be the width of the spine. So I'm just going to, with this off cut piece, I'm going to use it to mark how wide we need to be. And then I'm going to transfer that mark over here twice. And then trim. Uh oh. It says OBS crashed. Can you still hear me? Can you all hear me? Yeah, Robin, I think they will stitch all of them together. Um, yes, you can hear me, good. Um, 
All right, so I just trimmed that bit off, and I'm going to do that for the rest of these. Um, let's see, I think I can use this piece here. Maybe three in my batch would have been a better choice for the stream. I feel like by the fourth time, it's like, okay, I don't have anything else to say about that. It's okay, hopefully you're happy to just watch. Ha <laughs> ha That's right, the stream needs to be repaired like a spine. Yeah, thank you, Claire. <laughs> Y'all haven't seen, but Claire has been coming to my rescue in person. <laughs> Really, Robin? That's interesting. I'd like to hear more about that. Oh, good. Repetition is relaxing. I hope that's true. I find that um, to be the case as well. Okay. Let's start gluing these pieces together. What do you say? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this into that little ridge that I cut, and I've got about a half inch um, over, overlap on each side. Glue! Here's my glue. It's PVA, polyvinyl acetate, acid-free, and let's see. I'm going to use the same brush. It's got something red in it. It's very distracting to me. <laughs> Alright, let me just dry that off. Oh, see, getting water everywhere. That's the other good thing about Buckram is you can just wipe that off. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty nice uh, to peel that glue off your hand. Um, I still get that sensation every day because I not because I'm like painting the glue on, but I you just end up with glue on your hands and you can peel it off. Oh, look, I've just got goo gunk on, I mean, whatever. Uh, I've got stuff on my hands, is my point. All right, so I'm going to glue up this area. And I'm also going to get it down into this joint area. But I don't want to go overboard because it's all going to squeeze out on me and get messy. So I just want to light a light um, layer. All right, I'm going to get my Teflon folder out. It's got a nice shape um, for this part. I want to get that glue down, glue it down, and then I'm going to press it down into that joint. So now I'm sort of molding the buckram um, into that joint. Um, it is important for it to be acid-free. Um, if it's got acid in it over time, it will start to break down, and it will also start to break down the material that it's glued to. Um, so everything that we use is archival and acid-free. So we want it to last as long as possible. All right, now the spine stiffener is going to get glued to the buckram. Um, and 
I used to be more precise about this and use, oh, we're live, woo! Okay, great. You guys are being incredibly patient and I appreciate it. Um, okay, so here we were. So I'm molding this now into the joint. I don't know how much you cut before we went offline again. Um, but I'm gonna, without any glue, I'm just molding that in. And then I'm gonna lift the original and um, sort of hold that in place in the joint and then find my ridge and give it a little fold. And then I'm gonna take that fold and I'm gonna mark it with a pencil so I can see it later. And I'm gonna do that in two places. And trim that piece down to the exact size I need. And now I can glue up the way I did on the first side. And again, maybe you didn't even see me do the first side. I don't know when I lost you. <laughs> That's too much glue. Once I get it down into that joint again, it should line right up with that ridge that I made. All right, now I've got these things hanging off and I've got to um, tuck these in. So to do that, I'm gonna come in with my micro spatula and I need to lift these end sheets. Um, so I'm gonna just sort of give myself a little pouch under these end sheets, um, a little space that I can stick this buckram in. All right, and then I like to, um, <laughs> there are three more if you miss anything. It's true, although I think I'm gonna start, well, yeah, there's, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Back on screen. I'm just sort of molding this while it's dry and getting it um, sort of loosen it up a little bit because it can be kind of stiff because I'm going to need to turn this and go underneath the spine and underneath that end sheet. Um, so I'm just getting it nice and loose before I glue it up. All right, so now I'm going to get some glue on there. You also are allowed to make random noises while you're doing book repair. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of this at home during the pandemic and the noises I would say have um, increased from my book repair uh, processes. All right, so that sort of got a little bit jumbled, so I'm gonna turn it up right. All right, where is... Now I'm going to use my bone folder, not my Teflon folder. This one's a little bit, um, I was going to say meaner. <laughs> it's more mean. Uh, it, it sort of gives a crisper line. It's harder. Harder is the word I'm looking for, not mean. Um, to sort of press that down. And I'm sort of going under the end sheet to do that. And so now that's nice and tucked under. Have you ever had to re-respine a book? That's interesting. Um, the noises definitely make the folds go better. Um, re respine. Um, on occasion, I have seen a, a, a spine repair come back, and usually it's for a book that's like super heavily used, like if it's in the in reserves or something. Um, but typically, um, typically I will probably not see these again in my career. Um, if the if I if if we made the right choice and that this was the right repair to do in the first place, um, you know what I forgot to do was lift my end sheets. <laughs> um, so if it was the right repair to begin with, it means that the rest of it is still intact um, and we've just made the spine a heck of a lot stronger 
So if the rest of it remains intact, then it should it should last a while. Sorry, I keep going off camera to do this. Um, it's it is usually quiet in the lab, but that's because we are listening to music and or podcasts um, in our our headphones. Um, so we all we all go somewhere else in our, our minds while we do this. Um, but it's pretty great. It's kind of one of the big perks of the job. <laughs> That's true. There is usually one person in the lab at a time. And actually, that means that I use my headphones less. So um, there's no one to hear it, but I do sometimes listen to my podcast just out loud in the air. <laughs> All right, so now that those are tucked in, I'm going to re-glue down my um, original cloth. And then as soon as I do this, I'm going to want to get it into the book press. Um, because the original cloth is a little bit thinner, and when you add the moisture of the glue, it tends to want to um, wrinkle and cockle on you. Um, so if you can get it into the press um, quick, that's helpful. All right, so I'm just going to glue that down. And very often I will get glue spitting out on the edge. So this is when I have um, worked on my technique of lifting the glue with the spatula and then I just sort of scrape it onto my um, glue bucket and then I also use this is just Rime not in a sandwich um, and I'm just going to use that to sort of wipe up what's left and then that glue will have come out a little bit on the edges here so I'm just going to use that to retuck this bit that we cut up in the beginning get that extra glue off Yeah, that's true, Jamie. That's a, that's a good point about other COVID-related changes. Um, yeah, luckily, Robin and I um, do this kind of work already at home, so we had some space set up, um, and that has been a real help because I don't know if mentally I could have handled being at home without something to do. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that's now glued back down. Let me do the other side. It's really hard not to put too much on there. Um, it just feels like you want to, but then you regret it. When you start sticking it down and it comes out, you've got a huge mess. Don't worry if you're wondering if you get to see the book press, you do. I have another camera set up that I'm gonna switch to when I go to the book press, so. Just get excited about that. And then when this comes back out, I will um, re-glue down those end sheets that I lifted. Sometimes I sort of forget to, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll just put some glue on to my micro spatula and stick it under, under there so I can glue it back down. If I do it now, I, I find that it creates a mess in the press, and I would prefer not to have a mess in the press. Get that a little bit off. And also, um, what's, what I'll do when they come out, you can also see that a lot of times the corners are sort of messed up. Um, so I will also um, reinforce and consolidate those when it comes out of the press. Okay, get excited. I'm gonna switch camera views because we're going to the book press. See if we can make this happen. There's the book press. And soon you're going to see me. You're going to see who's been talking to you this whole time. Hi, it's me, Emily. Um, so this is going to go in the book press. We've got these boards that have um, a brass edge to them. So that's going to go right into that joint that we were working um, so that it'll give it a nice crisp press. Oops. 
can't see the chat right now, so if you're all going crazy over the press, I don't blame you. I just can't see it. A good spin. Ta -da. And now I go back to do others. <laughs> you saw me. It was a person. <laughs> okay, hold on. And now you're back to just my hands. Sorry. Um, all right, let's do another one. It is not a homemade apron. It is an IKEA apron. <laughs> I think you must know. Isn't that book press cool? It's really cool. It's very heavy, which is handy when you're spinning it and turning it and really getting that press down. Um, but also that the, the screw part of it is greased, so you really have to be careful not to touch that because then you have grease for the rest of the day. Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> I knew you'd be excited about that press. It took us a little bit to set up that camera too, so it was worth it, Claire. <laughs> All right, here we go. Totally worth it. All right, so here's where that batch um, work helps because that book that's in the press right now, um, I'm going to be able to put two books in the press at a time. So let's say this takes me 10, 15 minutes to get this to the press, maybe. I don't know. How long is that going to take? Um, and then I will do another one that will replace the first one I put in the press. So that means it's going to have a good 20 to 30 minutes in the press, which is really all it needs um, for this repair. It just sort of needs to nip in the press until it um, can dry a little bit. Um, so that's why it's handy to do to do if you sort of I sort of feel like I'm singing in a round when I'm doing batch work because um, that yeah because when they start coming out then I start doing the corners and I start gluing on the original spine piece um, and it just starts to feel like a really nice rhythm like I've ever had people so excited to see me before. I'm just looking back at the comments. <laughs> A person! <laughs> Who knew that just being a person would be enough? That's probably something we can all remember. That you're enough just by being you. When did this turn into Mr. Rogers? I don't know. Oh, I did see the comment about my apron. Sorry. Um, it is an it is from IKEA. It is not homemade. But I think equally exciting to be coming from IKEA. And now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure that I had a bunch of junk on my apron that I had just brushed off into it, and I forgot about that when I jumped up to go to the press, so now that's all on the floor. <laughs> but at least it's not on my jeans, and that is the whole point of an apron.
Oh, off screen again. And we're back. It can be a little bit tricky because it like gets all um, folded up on itself in there. That's what happens when you try to turn something from the outside in on itself. It sort of is bigger than the space you're putting it into, so you just have to convince it to go in there. And then we'll go back to the book press, which is everybody's favorite. Book press. I can hear it. I can hear you chanting. All right, am I back? Anybody? Oh, uh, yep. Yep. Yeah, I hear a yep. I think I'm back. Here. We're back! Can you believe? Whew. That one was rough. That time, the uh, computer ran out of battery, so we had to plug it in. We got there. Um, and look, we're right where we were before I left. So great. But where's my glue brush? That's a good question. Here it is. Okay. Recenter. We might have been flustered, but uh, we're back now. Okay. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for still being here. I knew you wanted to see the book press again. I'm glad I teased that before I left. Can you still hear me? Yes, okay. Okie dokie. And we're gluing. And we're sticking. And we're pressing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Your enthusiasm is a real boost. I appreciate it. Okay, here we go. We're going to the book press. And <laughs> we're gluing and we're sticking. And doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, and I, I said they were sympathetic, but sometimes you can't be sympathetic and sometimes you just have to go for contrast. Um, also, let's, let's see if I can find the spine piece for this one. See, it's got this dark um, brown, so I thought maybe that would be nice. Okay, for reals now, we're going to the book press. Okay, here we go. Book press. Ah, wait, did we go? We went. Okay. And here I am again. 
in my Ikea apron. All right, so now we're gonna double stack this guy on top. Here's where the um, brass edge boards come in handy. They go below and they go above. So I can also stick it onto this book. And get another board to go on top. After I do one more, I will pull out the first one and I'll show you how we finish it off. I feel like doing this blue one. There I was, a person again. This is great. It's sort of like a cooking show, except I'm actually doing it in real time. It's not like I had one in there to begin with like a cooking show. Are they brass edge for a special reason? Will any metal edge work? That's a really good question. I don't know the answer. I mean, I guess anything would work. I don't know why it wouldn't. We are, we are pretty classy. I mean, you're not wrong about that. Yeah, this is pretty. See, I could have done the black one, but I think I think I made the right choice. Hmm. A wooden edge that acts like the brass edge? That's interesting. talked about why we put a spine stiffener in, although it's maybe not that mysterious of an answer. Um, but if you think about how you pull a book off a shelf, or how a lot of people do, but it's really not the best way, um, you come in from the top and you pull at it. So it gives it a little bit more dur durability. But for all of you here, I know that none of you would ever pull a book off like that because it's just going to cause this actual damage that I'm now repairing. So the better way to do it is to push the books beside it back and then grab it and pull it off the shelf. That's my little uh, tip for the day. Spine, repo spine repairs are cool, but it's even cooler to not uh, need one. The most important takeaway, indeed. There is one more special um, surprise about how we're going to reattach that spine piece, which I don't know if any of you are going to see coming, frankly. It's pretty exciting. So here's hoping we don't crash again, because now I've teased that, and you've really got to find out how we glue on the spine piece. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. We're saving books by handling them better. Yes! It changed the world! Oh man. 
I feel like maybe I hyped it too much. Now I'm worried that you're going to be like, okay, that wasn't that exciting. We're just going to have to wait and see. This one is fussing at me. This one does not want to go where I want it to go. Come on, buddy. You can do it. That is nice to know. I can't disappoint you. Although that really feels like a challenge. sheets. I was thinking about how to disappoint you and I forgot what I was doing. Luckily I got a little bit of working time on this glue so History of philosophy. Soon, someone will be able to use this book again and learn about philosophy. And that, that feels good. I mean, I don't know if I need to learn about philosophy, but I'm pretty glad that somebody else can. Who's ready to go to the book press? I hope you said yes, because that's where we're going.
her back. Have you ever wanted to check out, out one of the books you've prepared after preparing? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, oh, check out one of the books. Um, no. <laughs> there haven't been a whole lot that I've been uh, interested in actually checking out to read, but I do like to see them in the stacks and see, like, check out if they're doing okay. Um, the All the books that we do a full repair on um, in the lab, uh, we um, date them and initial them in the back. So when I see one of those in the stacks, I almost every time have to look and see who did it and how it looks and how long it's been and if it's holding up. It usually is, so that's good. Okay, let's get out the original spine piece of this one. So here it is. And we are going to trim this down. So I've got this ruler that's got a grid in it. I don't know if you can really see it, um, which is really helpful because I can line it up with the text that's in the middle of the spine and get a nice straight line. So let me do that. So now we've got a nice, clean, original spine piece. Um, and I sort of just cut off a little bit of the call number, but I can re, I'm going to make a new call number for it um, when it's all done. So now we're going to glue this back on so you can see what I meant about you really only end up seeing a little bit of the new cloth. But look at that. I mean, it's a brand new book. You think about how much we went through to get here. Um, okay, so now comes moment of truth to find out if I oversold this thing. So we're going to glue it down and glue it on and then we're going to we're going to make sure that it holds on by using da, 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 an ace bandage. Is that exciting or what? I probably could have delivered that better. glue this on. I got to make sure that the front is in the front and that I glue it right side up. Uh, I've been known to do it the wrong way and I have to do it again. I actually did that just the other day in case anyone is wondering. I'm going to glue that down. I'm also going to get this piece of reme and cover it first and press it down with my bone folder. And the remay just sort of protects it from this rubbing that I'm doing. So now that is nice and attached, but it's still wet and gluey, so it might get cockily if I don't press it somehow. But how do you press it against the spine? It's an ace bandage. <laughs> this is the, uh, it's sort of a book press, right? I'm just really stretching that tight over the spine so that it gets some pressure against it. Oh, yes, more spooky content. Maybe I was more ready for Halloween than I knew. And then I will let that dry for um, as long as it takes me to get to the next one that needs to have its spine attached. Um, so I don't think I'm going to do this one because um, you've seen it at this point. Um, but I will use it to show you how we um, consolidate these corners. So I can do this ahead of time or after the fact. Um, but I'm going to use some bulldog clips. And um, this is just some um, 
book board. Oh, that could be recovered. Um, and it's just got some silicon release paper, double stick tape to it so that it won't stick to the glue. And so what I can do is just sort of work some glue in to that corner. Top of the nail works really nicely for this task. So that's now good and glued, but I want it to press because it's a little bit, I don't know if you can see, a little bit wonky still. So if I put it in the bulldog press, it'll press it nice and flat and dry that way. It's true, I am using a bone. My goodness, I had no idea how spooky it was down here. Now I know. Just for good measure, let's do this one. Bone is made of bone, indeed. It is a bone folder. Teflon folder made out of Teflon, bone folder made out of bone. What kind of bone? I don't know, but let's hope it's not a human bone. <laughs> All right, so then that um, is how I do my corners. And I'll do that for the other ones when they come out of the press. So I think at this point, We've done it. You've seen the spine repairs. Um, and you've seen a, bo a book press three different times. Pretty exciting. So I hope this was um, interesting. Um, I certainly think it is. So thanks for coming and thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate y'all. And if I don't see another question in the next 10 seconds or so, then I'm going to sign off. We are so good at book spine repairs. It's true, all of us together, we could all do it now. All right, thanks for coming everybody. Um, I hope you will join us again next time. See y'all. <laughs>